Starship prepares for a second skydive attempt. Starlink and Dragon make the news. We'll debrief yesterday's Falcon 9 mission and talk about what's to come. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. On Monday, Starship S9 underwent a wet dress rehearsal before lighting up for its first three-engine static fire on Wednesday. Although clean, the short burst apparently wasn't enough to satisfy the powers at B, because a second static fire was expected to go down today, but at the time of this recording was aborted. This week, crews did remove what was left of the previous Starship off the landing pad and repaired the crater S8 left behind. So it appears all the moving pieces are falling into place to allow this next launch and landing to happen soon. In fact, if SN9 does static fire this weekend, the rocket could be go for flight as early as Sunday. At the moment, the FAA has NOTAMs in place restricting airspace around Boca Chica for Sunday through Tuesday. However, of course, that doesn't guarantee liftoff will occur. We just gotta wait and see. Believe it or not, the next Starship in line, SN10, had its nose cone installed a few days ago. Things are moving at such a breakneck pace down there in South Texas, we're well beyond trying to keep up with every little move they make. Elon even confirmed that we could be seeing two starships at the launch site sitting next to each other in the next few weeks. It's too early to know which starships they could be. SpaceX has several under construction as we speak, and these are just the ones we've seen. Like I said, there's a lot going on. But thanks to RGV aerial photography, we gotta take a look at something special SpaceX is working on behind the scenes. It seems they are working to further perfect their nose cone development, reducing the number of steel plates involved in building one and therefore making nose cones more structurally sound and more aesthetically pleasing. Which, you know, I don't have to tell you, is always the highest priority when making cool rockets. SpaceX president Gwen Shotwell was interviewed by Ars Technica, and she shared her Starship thoughts and some interesting customer-related business operations. She is confident Starship will reach orbit by the end of this year. Quote, you will always have schedule concerns and issues, but the amount of flight hardware down in Boca with the team is really impressive. Gwen also made it clear that SpaceX chooses what vehicles best suit each customer's needs, and that they're already signing deals that allow SpaceX to decide if Starship will be the chosen mode of transportation. Quote, we want to provide launch services, and we want to provide it in the most cost-effective way for us and our customers, and the most reliable way for us and our customers. And we know we have work to do with the insurance community, just like we did with Falcon 9, and just like we did with the Falcon reuse, end quote. SpaceX is having an easier time selling used than it did selling new a couple years ago. They have instilled confidence in the market with their successful launch history. And by the way, congrats to Elon on surpassing that other guy and becoming the richest man in the world. And on an unrelated note, Elon, if you're watching, there's a link in the description to my donation page. This sounds like a get rich quick scheme. Yes, thank you. You will get rich quick, we all will. Elon tends to get flack for being a successful entrepreneur, which boggles my mind. He's a decent and charitable guy that puts his money to good use, creating thousands of jobs, innovating new technology, and not to mention providing us with countless hours of entertainment. <laughs> oh man, it didn't go through. And not to mention, I owe the success of this YouTube channel to him and his team, as well as all of you. But let's briefly move on to some Starlink and Dragon news. Starlink has reached Europe. A Reddit user from the UK posted an image of his purchased user terminal, becoming the first publicly available notice we got that service has arrived across the pond. The new Dragon capsule that launched the space station early last month is already expected to return to Earth next week on the 11th, loaded with 5,200 pounds of experiments and other cargo. NASA TV will be streaming it live for those of you who want to see some parachutes. Now let's debrief SpaceX's last launch, Turksat 5A. Last night, SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 rocket for its fourth time, carrying a communications satellite for Turkey. The payload was successfully placed into orbit, and the booster made a bullseye landing on the drone ship just read the instructions. SpaceX was to attempt a catch of one of the fairings and fish the other from the waters after splashdown, but no word was passed along how they fared. No pun intended. Typically, that's indicative that none were caught. The next Falcon 9 mission could be SpaceX's first dedicated rideshare launch, Transporter 1, currently slated for the 14th. A mishap has occurred with some of the payload, however. A couple DARPA satellites were damaged during stacking after the deployment mechanism accidentally released. Those sats are part of the Defense Department's Blackjack Constellation program. Transporter 1 will be the first SpaceX mission to place 10 Starlink satellites into a polar orbit. And we do have a little bit of Falcon Heavy news coming out of McGregor, Texas. Local Reagan has captured some images of one of its new boosters at the testing facility. The launch of this new Falcon Heavy is expected to occur a few months from now. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you members and patrons for your support. Make sure you have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.